Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the vertebral spine as landmarks for viscera and the landmark for some important structures. So let's start. So first of all, we'll go to the cervical vertebra 5. At this level, what happens? We have the cricoid cartilage and cricoid cartilage is located below the thyroid cartilage. Below the cricoid cartilage, there will be beginning of the trachea and at the same level, we have also start of the esophagus. At the spine, vertebral spine C7, we will have the apex of the lung. Vertebral spine T3, thoracic vertebra 3, aorta reaches the spine. We know that the ascending aorta, arch of the aorta, okay. So the arch goes to the near the vertebral column, okay. And at the same level, we have tracheal bifurcation at the T3 level. At T4 level, what happened? The aortic arch ends. Aortic arch is a continuation of the ascending aorta. And aortic arch end means that it will continue as the descending thoracic aorta. And at the same level of the thoracic vertebra 4 spinous process level, we have the upper border of the heart. So the spinous process of T8, thoracic vertebra 8, spinous process will get the structure lower border of the heart, central tendon of the diaphragm. At the level of T10, spine of the 10th thoracic vertebra, lower border of the lung, cardia of the stomach. Okay, we know that stomach is two part, cardiac part and the pulveric part. At T10 level, we have the upper part, the cardiac part of the stomach. And also the T10 level, upper border of the kidney. Okay, the left kidney is a bit up than that of the right kidney. We know that part. Okay, so these are the vertebra, cervical vertebra. We have the transverse foramen, spinous process. This is the thoracic vertebra. We have the costal facets here, lumbar vertebra. No costal facets, no transverse foramen, messy vertebral body. This is sacrum here, and this is the spinous processes. And we are learning the structure present at the level of the spinous processes because. The spinous process can be palpable, so that will give us some advantage to to locate the viscera and the structure. Okay, so we have also curvature, the cervical curvature, thoracic curvature, the lumbar curvature, sacral curvature. Okay, and sacrum posteriorly spine after third sacral usually missing and will get the the gap between the lamina of the lower part of the of the sacral vertebra. Okay, we got that. Now at the level of the T12 spine, spine means T12 vertebral spine will get the lowest level of the pleura and pylorus of the stomach. At the level of lumbar vertebra 1, we will get hilum of the kidney, renal artery. These are branches of the abdominal aorta. Supermesenteric artery. Supermesenteric artery is a branch of the, is a ventral branch of the abdominal aorta. Its vertebral level is L1. Hilum of the kidney, yes, the right kidney is a bit lower than that of the left kidney. But this is the approximate location at the level of the lumbar vertebra 1, hilum of the kidney. Lumbar vertebra 2, spinal cord, 
terminate actually spam could terminate at the lower end of the of the lumbar vertebra one and it is at the level of the lumbar two spine okay it is a little bit variable spinal cord may terminate at the level of the second lumbar vertebra may be at the level of a t12 vertebra in a newborn it may go let may reach up to the level of l3 okay so we got the lumbar three lower border of the kidney lumbar four spine will have the bifurcation of the aorta bifurcation of the aorta into left common iliac artery and the right common iliac artery and inferior vena cava begins that the formation of inferior vena cava inferior vena cava formed by the union of the left common iliac vein and the right common iliac vein okay we got the spine so, so spine is important the spine between lumbar vertebra 4 lumbar vertebra 5 is chosen for lumbar puncture to draw CSF from the subarachnoid space. So lumbar four, lumbar five, it, it, one can easily palpate by finger and can pass the lumbar puncture needle to draw the cerebrospinal fluid for study. So that is usually done between L4, L5, maybe between L3, L4, but this is a common sign. Okay, here we have some, we have gone through a viscera. We'll get some structure. What happened at spine of C7, cervical vertebra 7 at the spine? We have the inferior end of the ligamentum nuclei, and C7 is the most prominent cervical spinal process located at the base of the neck. So it is called vertebra prominence. T3 will get the spine of the scapula on the Midpoint of a line connecting the two medial end of the spine of the scapula is the spine of the of the thoracic vertebra three. T seven inferior angle of the scapula will get it. How 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 can locate T three from angle on the midpoint of a line between the two inferior angle of the scapula will get the spine of T seven. How about lumbar 4? Lumbar 4 is located at the highest point of the iliac crest. How about S2? Okay. S2. S2 is at the level of the posterior superior iliac spine. Okay. On the midline of a line connecting the two posterior superior iliac spine, we will get the vertebral S2. Okay. Then S3, beginning of the natal tract. Okay. So that part of the posterior part of the sacral canal is deficient. Okay. This natal cleft is sometimes used by for for the epidural anesthesia during delivery of the baby of the of the baby. To, it is given to the pregnant woman local anesthesia around the around the natal cleft it passes through that and that's all about the important structure important viscera at the level of the spinous process of the vertebral column if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends and have a nice day bye now